The brand new 2022 M2 iPad Pro belongs in the trash. Last year, I purchased myself not one, but two iPad Pros with the M1 chip. I bought one for myself as a professional architect and one for my wife. Now, I decided to buy the M1 iPad instead of any other iPad ever released for the very simple reason that it was the best upgrade and best release Apple has ever produced since the original iPad ever came out. The processor was perfected, the pencil was perfected, and the keyboard was incredible. So naturally, you would think the next version of the iPad Pro, the M2 iPad Pro, would be an even better beast of a machine. Well, no, just straight up no. Today, I'm gonna to break down exactly why, as an architect, I will not be upgrading the M1 iPad to the M2 iPad, and why you, as any other design professional, shouldn't do so either. So what's actually changed? Well, we've moved from the M1 chip to the M2, which means we've increased 18% in our CPU performance, 35% in our GPU performance, and 40% in the neutral core. Overall, what does that mean for any layperson or any architect design professional in the industry? Absolutely nothing. The M1 iPad is so powerful that you don't actually need much more of a boost. And this minuscule update of 18 and 35% doesn't justify a huge new release. And I think Apple knows this. They produced a very low budget Zoom call basically to announce this brand new iPad and released a video on YouTube. The CEO, Tim Cook, didn't even say one word about it. So basically, even in Apple's eyes, this release is basically being brushed under the carpet. Nobody cares about it. If you buy a new one, great. If you don't, they don't care. The new M2 iPad has the same storage, the same RAM, the same memory, the same ports, same cellular connectivity. It has the same screens, same pixels per inch, same maximum display brightness, same P3 color, same battery life, same weight and dimensions. You see, we're getting onto a very similar trend here. And the best part about it all, I guess, is it costs exactly the same price as the last iPad Pro. So what actually is different? Why would anybody go out and purchase an M2 iPad instead of an M1 iPad that they may already own? Well, instead of getting the basic plastic USB-C cable in the box that we're so accustomed to, you're gonna be showered with gifts. You're gonna get the brand new braided USB-C cable like it is the best gift Apple could ever give you. You're also going to get the words engraved on the back of the iPad stating iPad Pro, not just iPad like every other predecessor before it. And what's even better, that space gray color we all love so much, that's darker on the new iPhone 14 and a beautiful color on the M1 has actually gotten lighter on the M2 iPad for no particular reason. There are some minor technical upgrades as well. You now get Wi-Fi 6E instead of Wi-Fi 6, providing better connectivity. You get Bluetooth 5.3 instead of Bluetooth 5.0. You also get the ability to use the Pro cameras on the iPad as an actual film camera. Now you can do 4K 30 frames a second Pro Res video. So I don't know how many people are actually using an iPad to record Pro Res video, but I certainly am not. You can also now capture HDR for photos from the iPad, which basically means everybody's grandma is gonna be able to take even better high definition photos of them. But everybody else in the world isn't even gonna activate the camera app on their iPad. If you're an architect like me and use the Apple Pencil almost daily and religiously, there is a new upgraded feature for the M2 iPad. It's basically a 3D electromagnetic sensor that's connected to the tip of the pencil and registered from the screen. Now, what does this do? Well, it basically just tells your iPad where the pencil is hovering above it so it can give you a little bit more data and a little bit more accuracy. How much of an added benefit is this? Well, it still magnetically clicks the side of your iPad and does everything it used to do before, except the iPad just knows where it kind of hovers above the screen. Personally, I don't think it is that big of a deal and I don't think it is worth the upgrade at all. Now, clearly I've given you a very negative, very one-sided biased opinion, which is my personal opinion because I already own an M1 iPad. I don't see the need to upgrade to the M2 from the M1 any way, shape or form. However, if you have an iPad that is a decade old, if you have an iPad that's dying, the battery doesn't last, the screen's cracked, 
any reason whatsoever that isn't a good condition M1 iPad or even the M1 iPad Airs, then you should probably consider upgrading to the M2 because the M2 over any Bionic chip from the A series is far better. It is a superior product. It is something that can handle almost any design task and truly make your workflow as a professional so much better. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, there's more videos in this playlist to the side of me. If you loved the video, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. Leave a like and a comment if you'd like to ask me anything. And like always, I'll see you next Monday.